I could spend hours talking about the Bay TMDL, but I'll spare you. What I will do is, is just hit the wave tops of what this TMDL is all about, but I want you to take home from this ten, next 10 minutes, not what the TMDL is all about, but how this TMDL can provide us, if we do it right, and I believe we will, provide us with an exciting opportunity to get the nutrient and sediment controls in place that's so desperately needed in the Chesapeake Bay and give us the accountability that we need to make sure that we do this on a regular and, and, and sure basis. So that's the take home that I want for you, to, for you to take that we will implement this Chesapeake Bay TMDL and get the controls that we need. Okay, what's this TMDL all about? First of all, TMDL stands for Total Maximum Daily Load. It is simply a budget for pollutants, uh, for pollutants that impair a water body. The states go out under the Clean Water Act and measure the quality of waters. And if those waters are measured to be uh, impaired, or Jeff said dirty waters, they get on a list of dirty waters. And those waters are required under the Clean Water Act to, to have a TMDL. And the states or EPA are required to do that TMDL or pollution budget for that particular water. And that pollution budget will identify what the total loading allowable on that water to protect the receiving waters. And it will allocate that loading to the different sources that you have out there. So that's just TMDL 101. For the Chesapeake Bay, we will be doing a TMDL for the entire watershed. This is 64,000 square miles. It will be the largest TMDL in the country. And it will be reaching all the way up into the, the uh, headland states, including New York, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania. The TMDL will be addressing, as I said, the, the pollutants that are impairing the Chesapeake Bay. That includes nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus, and sediments. We're going to be dealing with all sources. Jeff, Jeff and Jeff mentioned that we're going to be dealing with uh, wastewater treatment plants, agriculture, urban, suburban sources, air sources, all the sources that are contributing the nutrient and sediment uh, problems of the Chesapeake Bay. We will be allocating loadings to those different sources under the TMDL. We will be, in, in allocating those loadings, we will be achieving the nutrient, the water quality standards that we have in the Chesapeake Bay that includes water quality standards for oxygen, clarity, Chesapeake Bay grasses called submerged aquatic vegetation, and algae. So they are the, the points that we're trying to achieve. These are water quality standards established in, in state regulations. And then lastly, uh, Jeff had mentioned that this Chesapeake Bay TMDL is not just one TMDL. We have broken the T bay into as many as 90 plus different segments. Those segments mostly are impaired, and we will be developing a TMDL for each of those segments. But it really can conceptually be thought of as a singular bay TMDL. Okay, that's the basics of the TMDL. Jeff mentioned that th this TMDL is different than probably any TMDL done in this country, and there's been as many as 30,000 TMDLs done in this country. And why is it different? It's not only the scope of the TMDL. It's a huge TMDL, but it goes way beyond that in terms of why, how we're trying to make this TMDL different. And it really boils down to this issue that I started off with. We're looking for this TMDL to be driving implementation and in doing so, we need to have the accountability of all of us to do what we need to do to get the nutrient and sediment controls that we need in place to protect the bay. Now, when we said that we want to do this TMDL differently, the, the folks that gathered around the table and said, how are we going to do this TMDL, said, well, how are we going to do it differently? And what is the basis of doing it differently? And there's this concept in the TMDL program called reasonable assurance. Now, sorry for this techno language here, but what that, that concept is all about is that when you develop a TMDL, you want to try to assure that that TMDL is going to be implemented. And on the point source side, that is um, sources that include wastewater treatment plants, Implementation is fairly straightforward. The Clean Water Act gives us an incredibly powerful tool called the NPDES permit program that if we assign a loading to an individual wastewater treatment plant, 
we can be assured that that loading will get into the NPDES permit. It's required under our regulations. And that loading will be achieved. It's a strong regulatory framework for, for dealing with point sources. We don't, do not have that powerful tool for non-point sources. So in reasonable assurance, we're trying to figure out how can we develop an implementation framework that's not only going to achieve uh, implementation for point sources, but more importantly, achieve that implementation for non-point sources. And reasonable assurance is going to provide us the leverage to do what we want to do there. As I'm saying, sure that non-point source controls will be put in place uh, for the TMDL implementation. And it really is this concept of reasonable assurance is the basis of this TMDL implementation framework that I'm going to discuss in the next slide. EPA, after talking to our partners, uh, came up with this framework and we sent a letter to the principal staff committee last September that outlined this framework and before and during and since that time, this framework has been embraced by the partnership and we're all moving along uh, very nicely and, and the milestones is a big evidence of that, that um, uh, we're, we're all bought into this implementation framework. All right, I said I want you to take away how this TMDL can drive implementation, and here's what it's all about. I'm trying to put the pieces together. We're starting in the middle. Yes, we are starting in the middle with the establishing the Chesapeake Bay TMDL, and as I said, that TMDL will be prescribing loadings of nutrients and sediments for different states and different sources so that when you add all those loadings up, it will protect the Chesapeake Bay. Having assigned loadings as part of that TMDL to the, to the states and to basins, the states go out then and develop their state implementation plans. These implementation plans will identify the point source and non-point source and other controls that are needed to achieve the loading targets prescribed in the TMDL. States did that in their state tributary strategies uh, five years ago. They will need to revise those with the new loads that may be assigned to them under the TMDL. 